Hey, as you know, DevOps and QA teams need a wide range of devices to develop, debug, and test their code against. To ensure their software works as intended, it's even now more important than ever. But accessing different devices becomes really challenging for a multitude of reasons when your teams are spread all over the world. How do you overcome these challenges? That I see a lot of teams strong with. Well, listen all the way to the end to find out. Hey, I'm Joe, and today we'll be talking with Prakash all about beyond testing, how 42 Gears is changing the game with a product called AstroFarm. If you don't know, Prakash is the co-founder and CEO and CTO of 42 Gears Mobility System, um, overseeing basically all aspects of technology and product development for his company. Really excited to have him on the show to talk about this. He has close to two decades of experience in building cutting edge solutions that aim to transform the digital workspace, especially in the testing realm. His recent passion project being AstroFarm, which is a cool solution I just recently learned about. And I thought, hey, the guild's gonna love to learn more about this. It's a mobile device farm solution that really helps mobile QA and DevOps teams to be more productive and efficient that I think everyone is gonna get value from. And this fast evolving platform really tackles critical enterprise challenges from supporting hybrid work modes to optimizing infrastructure costs and a lot more. If you don't want to miss this episode, check it out. Hey, Prakash, welcome to the Guild. Hey, Joe. Hi, thanks. Thanks for having me on the show. Really great to have you. Really excited about this. I always ask entrepreneurs, uh, I'm always curious to know what made you want to get involved in this, you know, the, the software testing DevOps space. So uh, that, 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 that's an interesting story. So. Uh, so 42 Gears, uh, uh, I mean, uh, we, we are a, a, a close to 14 years old organization and uh, we, we generally operate in enterprise mobility domain and uh, uh, any company who's using uh, mobile phones and uh, mobile phone based uh, uh, solutions, uh, we, our, our products help them to sort of secure, manage and then uh, uh, sort of uh, make those deployments more successful. And uh, uh, interestingly, uh, when in March 2020, when we all went into lockdown, uh, uh, within, within a few days, we all realized that it was becoming increasingly difficult uh, for us to make the devices available to our team members for their day-to-day -day work uh, because everybody was working from their homes. Back when we were in office, it was easy for our, our team members to just walk in into our office lab and, and pick any device that they want to work on or maybe borrow it from one of their colleagues. But uh, it was it was no longer possible for us to do so. So we, we figured that we need some kind of a solution to solve this problem. We, we tried some some public cloud platforms like AWS Device Farm, but uh, we, we soon realized that it's not going to work out for us. Uh, a because it's too expensive, uh, and 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 then again, I mean, most most of the time, the devices that we really want to use at a particular time, they were probably not available to us at, at those times. Uh, we, we tried a few open source solutions and that also probably did not work out to the specific needs that we had at that point of time. And we figured that we will have to cook something up ourselves. And we, we started picking up pieces from here and there and started customizing them. And then probably in, in a couple of months, we, we had a system running internally, which was sort of uh, uh, being started being used extensively by everybody within the organization. And, 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 and that is how it all started. So, uh, yeah. Awesome. So when you say there were some uh, people struggling with, uh, especially when they're, they're remote accessing devices, uh, like what are some of the other things you, you heard people struggling with? Like how does communication come into play and how does this platform kind of try to solve that issue? So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there, 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 there was generally, for example, that there's a device on which, uh, uh, some, somebody is running an automation test case and, 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 and there's another developer who's working on a customer issue uh, and, 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 and sort of incidentally, he needs that exact device model uh, uh, on, on which that, that uh, the, the other, uh, other QA engineer is working on, right? So, uh, I mean, this, this platform helps to solve that problem in making sure that you sort of, you can book your slots, you can, you can communicate over the platform itself, you can leave sort of uh, interesting comments for how long I'll be using those devices. And then help 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 teams collaborate better uh, to make more optimal use of these uh, these devices. Nice. You know, this may sound silly. I used to work for a large company in the medical device space, 
And we used to have a uh, an environment where we did a lot of uh, deploys too, but we also had people that, that did demos in this environment. And so sometimes you'd have testers mucking around in that environment when someone was trying to do a demo in the environment and then they'd be embarrassed because they broke something. So is, is this one of the, the, the uh, use cases you see of why something like this would be critical? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so one of the one of the features of our platform is a role based access and and, and device categorization. So you can, you can you can organize your devices into different folders and groups and make sure that different teams have access to only those folders and those set of devices within within those folders that that can, that can ensure that the isolation and the different teams have different set of devices and those overlaps don't happen. Um, another very interesting use case, as you mentioned, right? So. Uh, for example, within Podido Gates as well, we have our, our R&D team, which probably has like close to 200 devices, which, which, we, which they share uh, amongst themselves. And then we have our sales team as well, which is uh, probably uh, working in different time zones, and they, they use their own set of devices for their demos and POCs and, and pilots, right? And, uh, uh, and a, a platform like Astro Farm actually allows teams to sort of make best use of those resources. For example, when, when the US team, US sales team is, 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 is sleeping and then those devices are sitting idle in our US office, the team in, in, in Bangalore can, can make use of those devices during that time and then make sure that uh, when, when we are sleeping, those devices are untouched and they can be sort of safely used uh, for, for whatever purposes they are intended for. Yeah, it brings up another use case. Uh, before I would leave, I'd kick off our test suite to run overnight, you know, overnight. But nowadays, overnight, like you said, we have teams all over the world. Overnight for me is not overnight for another another team. So that this is a uh, what seems like a great way to communicate. Hey, this is being used. Uh, maybe not access it during this time. Right. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So how does that work? Does it, is it just like hey, does it lock them out, or is it just communicated to them somehow through uh, some sort of messaging to let them know? Leave this device or this this uh, area alone. So in, in our in our console, there there are the tags that you can apply to those devices. And the moment somebody searches and finds your device, those those tags are impossible to miss. And 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 people can use tags like "Do not disturb," "Automation in progress," or or things like that, so that people people know that these these devices are off the hooks and are not to be touched. So a lot of things I saw on your website as well talks about DevOps. As well, like how does DevOps? How does this help the DevOps team then, um, from a DevOps perspective? So yeah, I I think I mean uh, we at Forty Two Gears ourselves we 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 run run, run nightly builds uh, in uh, in a, in a CI/CD workflow, uh, whereby our uh, the the runners running on on sometimes on cloud, sometimes on uh, our local infrastructure within our office premises, they procure they use the APIs. Of Astro Farm to procure devices, uh, and then and, uh, once those devices are are procured, then uh, a parallel test invocation, a multi-threaded test invocation over Appium uh, can be triggered. So, uh, and then that that can make sure that whatever is the test suite of maybe 100, 200, 500 test cases that can be deployed uh, overnight uh, on on whichever number of serial number of devices you you have selected for. So I guess also in development, when a developer is writing tests and they need to commit it before they commit it, maybe there's a, is there a tag or something there or a CLI command? They could say, hey, I want to run it on this device, make sure it passes before I, I actually promote the code to the main branch? Uh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, it is uh, completely possible. And if, if, if you have a, a, a set of devices specifically allocated for the unit test cases of the developer or a sanity test before uh, the code gets merged into the main branch, uh, those those runners can uh, sort of you, you can have a configuration file with the serial number of those devices, and 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 the moment those those commits happen, those suites can get triggered, which will which will execute those test cases on on those uh, allocated devices. Yeah. Nice. So you know, I speak with a lot of testers, and a lot of times they're like, oh, "I'll just use like you said an AWS device farm," and you mentioned it, it does get very expensive at some point, um, and also it's open source solutions. So can you dive into a little bit more how? Why AWS Device Farm could be expensive, and how your solution might be different, and maybe also compare it to maybe an open source solution. How your you may have different benefits that you don't get from an open source solution. Absolutely. So uh, if if we if we if we compare, uh, for example, take uh, AWS Device Farm uh, uh, in, in picture, right? So a ballpark monthly cost for a single device comes around two hundred and fifty dollars. 
which means that uh, uh, in, in one or two months, you end up paying for the entire cost of the device itself. So it is, it is far, far more economical for a company to buy the device in-house uh, for maybe $400, $500 and then use it forever. I mean, all, all you need are tools to make that device available readily to, to your entire organization. Astro Farm offers to do. And uh, uh, in, in addition to that, I think the, another very important factor that comes in picture is uh, our device variations, right? So especially in enterprise mobility. So iOS is, I mean, all the devices are made by a single company, so we cannot probably talk about the variations there. But Android, I mean, in enterprise mobility, there are all kinds of devices available. Uh, devices with a barcode scanner, for example, devices uh, with, with an RFID reader, devices which is a, like uh, operating like a POS terminal, devices with, which has a credit card reader. And, and then, then we have our wearable devices, we have our VR devices, and then all these devices require, uh, there, there are tons of manufacturers who are manufacturing these kinds of devices, and there are even more companies who are writing applications uh, for, 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 the, for these devices, for the enterprises. And it is very, very difficult for a QA engineer or a developer of these organizations to find these kind of devices in a public device form like AWS. They will mostly get most of the consumer uh, grade devices, uh, Samsung's and the iPhones of the world, but these uh, device variations are, are very, very difficult to get by. And the, the only way in which a collaborative testing and access of these devices can be provided by an organization to their team members is, is, is using a private device form like, like Astro Farm. All right, so this is a good point. So I've seen um, setups where, like you said, they have a, more like an embedded type of technology on a, on a, on a device where they, they might have like a robot uh, messing with it. And it, like you said, you, there's a lot of device farms out there. You never would have that available in, in the cloud. So it sounds like if someone had a unique, unique setup like that, unique hardware, they would just plug it into your solution and then people would be able to have access it from all across the world. Is that how it works? Oh, yes, yes. For example, the rugged handheld devices, right, from companies like Honeywell or Zebra, uh, they, they are ordinary, ordinary, uh, I mean, they, they are, at the end of the day, they are also Android devices, which, which support the standard Android implementation and uh, the Android instrumentation that is available for any kind of automation frameworks, right? But uh, our, our AWS device farm will never offer a Zebra device on their device farm, right? So uh, uh, companies working on a Honeywell or a Zebra device, uh, 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 maybe, maybe a uh, a airline application or, 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 or a, a warehouse application, uh, developers who are working on those kind of applications and testers who are working on those kind of applications need those devices. And uh, uh, the only way is that they own those devices and, and sort of share it across uh, using a private device farm. Interesting. So how big of a use case do you see that? Do you see a lot of companies dealing with this, struggling with it? Obviously, I guess, because you create a solution to help. But like, uh, like you said, there's a lot of device farms out there, labs, but it, this is unique in the sense that it's, uh, you could have hardware specific to your organization uh, being run on the cloud. So is that a, a use case you hear a lot from? Oh, I mean, as I mentioned, there are like hundreds of OEMs uh, making these uh, unique kind of devices. And there are probably, I mean, thousands of companies who are making apps on these devices. So uh, we, we have a, a, a very big, sort of uh, ecosystem of uh, companies and developers who sort of make uh, applications on these devices. And it spans out different industries, right? There, there's a retail industry, warehouses, retail floors, shops, uh, there's hospitality industries, uh, hotels, uh, uh, transportation, logistics, uh, healthcare, all kinds of these industries are using these digital science devices, for example. So there are small TV sticks uh, that, that, uh, that are practically running Android. Now there are digital signage applications running on those TV sticks. And they also need development. They also need testing. And if I have to test my application on TV6, I, I need access to those devices. And how, how do I get it? Right. So, uh, yeah, I think a, a, a private device farm where I have those devices, but I can still share it with my global workforce is, 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 is what people uh, would uh, probably prefer. A great point. Once again, I used to work for a medical device and they had these handhelds where uh, basically, like you said, running an iOS in the background or Android in the background, but it was specific uh, uh, use case for it that you wouldn't have on a, a normal uh, iPhone or a normal Android device. So great use case. So also, what are some other benefits of a private cloud? I would think uh, like healthcare, insurance, a lot of these companies are, are regulated, right? And so 
I'm, I'm sure they may have, like, I don't want to put it on the public cloud, even though there may be some places and, and you know, some sort of security in place. What, what are some benefits of having a private cloud besides having maybe unique devices like that? So uh, absolutely, I think you 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 sort of uh, uh, said it very uh, uh, nicely. So all these regulated industries, right? So if if I have an application uh, which is related to healthcare or insurance, and maybe those applications are not public applications; these are like for for uh, private distribution to my uh, targeted clients, or maybe they are public, but I am testing a version of that application that is not yet public, and. I would be very uncomfortable in deploying that application to a device in the public cloud, not knowing that who used that device before me, uh, what kind of residue uh, of uh, uh, might be still on that device, which might be snooping on my activities or something, or, or who's going to use this device after me, right? What will happen if the connectivity to that device breaks in between and my data is still on that device and who can it get exposed to? So th those kind of security considerations uh, are also very very important for certain industries, and um, and that is another reason for 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 private private device farm to be much more suitable for for these kind of companies. Absolutely, and, you know, I love open source, but you know, once again, I used to work for healthcare. Uh, teams would start using open source, and all of a sudden, you have these security things you didn't know about because they were using an open source solution, and you had to justify it to like the FDA. Why 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 is this happening? Using a private type of a solution like uh, AstroFarm, do you have any special like certifications that where you know because I'm using this particular solution, you can go to your your manager and say it's okay to use that because it's it's not open source, it's been certified to you know whatever uh, certification it would be. Does that make oh, sense? Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, so there, there there are lots of I mean uh, security certifications that. Uh, we as a company and uh, undergo and uh, so those compliances and those certifications uh, are, are, are they, they span across all the product offerings that we have including astro farm so some of those certifications like for example iso 27001 hipaa compliance soc 2 uh, compliances all these compliances uh, make sure that all the agents that we run on the devices all uh, are the back end microservices that we have the databases that we have the data at rest, data in motion, the kind of encryptions that we use, uh, the business continuity of our, our, our services, uh, uh, everything is sort of uh, uh, taken care of. And when we do it in a way in which uh, uh, we, we make sure that the data from our customers is, is secured. Beautiful. So, you know, it is the new year and I always ask uh, guests as well what they see as trends. And are you seeing any trends that would lend themselves to really thrive using a solution like AstroFarm? Oh, uh, good question. So I think uh, we, we see a trend of uh, increased adoption of uh, different kinds of devices other than phones and tablets. Uh, uh, more, more and more number of VR, uh, VR devices, AR devices. Uh, Apple has recently uh, introduced their uh, uh, AR, VR headset. And uh, uh, the watches are, are sort of gaining more traction in the enterprises specifically in healthcare. So I believe the, the influx of these devices, both in consumer and in enterprises, uh, should should would would increase, and so will the apps running on them. Which means that uh, our tools, our development tools, our QA automation tools, our processes, all of them have to be more aligned and more adapt. Uh, they have to adapt more to sort of take care of uh, uh, these devices, right? So that is one thing that I, I feel is uh, is something, and 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 AstroFarm as a product has the capability of not just adding uh, Android and iOS phones and tablets, but also uh, these these devices as well. We can we can very well share uh, a smart watch and an AR VR headset and uh, enroll them and make them available to anybody else in the organization to use. So uh, that's one trend. Uh, another. Interesting turn, as, as you mentioned, right? Security. Uh, so security is something which uh, is, is gaining more and more importance uh, uh, as they as goes by, and I think this year will be no different. And uh, healthcare industry specifically, I think in the West there has been a, a consistent push on digitalization in the healthcare industry, and them being so 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 reg such a regulated industry, security would be a top priority for them. And and a solution like AstroFarm with all the security compliances and everything. Uh, uh, definitely sort of uh, uh, makes a good candidate for, 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 for companies in the healthcare domain uh, to, to try out. 
And of course, no discussion for trends is complete without talking about AI and chat GPT and the LLM models, right? So, so yeah, I think uh, I, I personally believe that every aspect of innovation of all the areas will get impacted by them, including a development and testing. And uh, particularly, I think uh, the UI-based testing uh, uh, will, will definitely build with the multimodal uh, models that are available uh, today, uh, it is definitely going to have a big impact. Uh, oftentimes, I mean, internally at 42 Gears also, we have numerous test scenarios where uh, the, the, the test scenario requires us to step out of the predictable UI of our own application and, and sometimes go into uh, a third party uh, operating system settings or, or a third party applications and interact with it and then come back to our UI. Uh, example being, for example, if I have to write a test case for testing the offline functionality of my application and, and the test step will require me to go to the operating system and turn off the Wi-Fi and then come back to my app and verify whether the offline functionality works or not. But then turning off Wi-Fi can have a very different UI between Android 13 and versus Android 14 or between a Lenovo versus a Samsung. And the moment these not under my control variations comes into picture, writing the automation test cases become very complex, right? And very difficult to maintain because they are breaking changes done by somebody else, which you have to sort of keep making sure that sort of you, you take into account. But, but with a multimodal model, I mean, theoretically it is, it can be made possible that we can, we can, we can give it a prompt that go and turn off the Wi-Fi and uh, based upon the visual cue, if we feed it the current screen and tell it dynamically generate the script to turn off the Wi-Fi, it has a better chance of doing it and even doing it on some small mind with small minor uh, UI modifications as well. So uh, those kinds of, uh, I mean, uh, visual cue based dynamics automation script generation uh, frameworks, I, I, I believe, believe will be probably be much very, very useful in, in uh, automation uh, uh, industry, uh, test automation industry. Uh, but there are a few R&D tasks that we are also sort of pursuing in these lines. And, and hopefully, yeah, I think we might be able to uh, offer something to our end customers on, on these lines. I love that you brought up AI with the multimodal because I think it's going to be a game changer. Um, I actually, it's on my top trends for 2024. Um, but you seem like you've actually used it or you, you know, you're actually as smarter than I am in this case. So is that a real, something you really see as something that is going to, uh, benefit testers then it's more than a buzz because I think it's more than a buzz. So have you seen it yourself or played with it yourself? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And, and then definitely. And as I mentioned, right, we, we have some R and D projects and threads going around at 42 gears where we are exploring these possibilities. Where, where we allow, as a device farm solution, we have a continuous stream of this device screens. So we, we have the ability of feeding that stream to a multimodal model. And, and if we allow the users to specify a prompt, in theory, we can combine these two inputs together and, and ask a, a, a multimodal model to generate the scripts uh, dynamically for us as well. So uh, this is something that we are playing around with it. It's still early days, so, but, but, but definitely very, very promising. A little off script. I mean, that's why another reason why I love working with uh, vendors is uh, you have an R and D team, and it always drives me nuts where someone like has an open source solution and they try to implement their own multi model type deal, and the team is like creating a healthcare software it has nothing to do with you know any of this. They should be focusing on their product, their expertise uh, in that area. Working with a vendor like you, you have an R and D team that deals with this, so you, they don't have to worry about it. it I mean, do you agree with me? I mean, I think that's, a, I mean, I'm not just pushing it. I mean, I, I actually see that's why uh, vendors in general had, had a lot of value. And that's just one main reason as well. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And as, as vendors, right, we have to make sure that we sort of, we, we stay on top of our game and we, we sort of anticipate what's coming forward. How can we offer more value to our customers? And then, yeah, I mean, I mean there's there a lot, lot of motivation for us to, Sort of apart from it being super cool to work on, uh, there are lots of motivation for us to uh, sort of work on and make sure that we, we, we stay ahead here. Nice. So I know you said you've been around for 14 years, but this is a newer newer product for 42 Gears. Um, do you have any customer success stories? Or, or I'm always curious to know, like when when a company releases a product and they think they know how it's going to be used, but when it goes in the wild, you're like, did they even know it was going to be used that way? Or oh, wow, I didn't even think of that use case. Any of those type of uh, scenarios or stories you can share? Oh, absolutely. 
So earlier when I told you the story about uh, how we went into the lockdown, we faced the problem, that is that what led to the creation of Astroform, we never had the idea of productizing it. So what led to the idea of productizing it was we, when we spoke to a few of our existing customers and partners, existing customers of our other products, and while talking to them, we figured that they are also having exactly the same kind of problem that we have solved using this tool. And that is what led us to sort of probably wrap it up in a product. And, 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 and those were the first guys to whom we pitched it. And they are still using that product of ours. So we were able to upsell this Astrofarm product to a, a large number of our existing customers of our, 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 our mobile device management software tools. Because all these customers are, are, are in domain and industry where they work on these specialized rugged devices. And, and these devices are very, very difficult to be available on, uh, on an AWS device farm or, or, or any other public farm solutions. And, and then they, they, they face uh, a very similar sort of challenges to us. So, so yeah, I think we, we have numerous customers uh, who are successfully using uh, these products. And also specifically, I think not just application development companies, but also OEMs. So uh, uh, man device manufacturers also have tons of test cases uh, and, and development work to work on these devices. And they generally have their teams very, very dispersed geographically, right? Uh, the manufacturing is probably in somewhere in the eastern part of the Asia, and the development is happening in India or, or Europe or, or, or in some part of the US. And uh, sharing these devices and sometimes shipping the devices from one uh, part of the world to the other part of the world is, is a very cost intensive affair. And a, a solution, a device farm solution like Astro Farm allows them to share the device and make it available from any part of the world to any part of the world. So, so yeah, I, I think that there are uh, quite a few compelling success stories that we have with Astro Farm. All right, that's a good point. Uh, you could have a mission critical uh, device that's being developed and you need to start testing it right away. And uh, you can make it available, I guess, for all the different countries and different teams automatically then. As soon as it comes online, bam, it's available. That's, that's, a, that's pretty cool. Yep, yep. All right, I know you've touched on this. So it, uh, there are a lot of solutions out there. We touched on some of the reasons why uh, uh, someone should definitely check out Astro Farm, the different use cases. But what does your ideal customer look like? Like, I don't think, I think different tools for different companies and different people, different teams make sense. Um, so Astro Farm, what do you think would be in like an ideal, if someone's listening, you're like, if you're in this situation, you definitely need to check this out because this is definitely going to help you and your team uh, deliver better quality, faster software to your customers. So I think a company uh, which has a, a geographically dispersed team and uh, uh, and and, and their their constant need of devices, developers and uh, and QAT members, and uh, uh, someone who uh, wants to run a, a large suite of automation test cases uh, on a periodic basis. So rather than uh, having to have a workstation somewhere in some corner of your office and with like tons of devices plugged into uh, uh, those uh, uh, machines and uh, running the entire test suite over there on that machine itself, having a single point of failure, Astrofarm allows you to sort of uh, uh, contribute that devices from any number of nodes. I mean, I mean, uh, you, you can you can have hundreds of employees contributing one or two devices, uh, and then all of them pooling together on a central uh, cloud server of ours, and then you can run your automation test suite. Uh, on, on, on a cloud machine itself, because because using the Astrofarm APIs, even a cloud uh, test runner can procure the devices and it starts sort of uh, running those scripts on top of it, right? So uh, a, geographically, a geographically dispersed team working maybe in a hybrid model where people are coming to office a few days, people are working from home or for, for a few days, and if they want to have access to the devices all the time, uh, uh, I, I think Astrofarm would be a great choice for them. Oh, yeah, I was thinking, you know, a lot of times when people use open source solutions and they're trying to get all the devices hooked up, it's, it becomes a mess and a nightmare. And that's one of the reasons why I, I never understand why they just don't use a, a solution. So how easy is it to someone to contribute or add a device to uh, Astrofarm? Oh, it, it's, and that, that is one of the USPs of Astrofarm. Uh, uh, any, any person, any employee with a, a, a workstation or a laptop, he just have to install a, a sort of our agent. Uh, Astroform agent uh, on their on their laptop and log in into their Astroform account. And now, once they have done so, they, any device that they plug into their laptop, they have a choice of sharing it on Astroform. And if they do so, 
that device becomes available on, on the cloud. Now, anybody in the organization who has access can very easily sort of uh, use that device as if they're working on a real device. They can, they can manually use it or they can hook it up with their development tools, uh, their Android Studio or Xcode or their Appium test suite and then and, and start running their automation scripts on it. So contributing a device is as easy as using a device on Apple. So any device, like you said, you mentioned a bunch of different uh, unique use cases for devices, AR, VR, IoT type devices. So if I understand correctly, regardless, you just plug it in um, and it, is there's anything else that a developer needs to worry about? It actually just picks it up. Do they ever need to work with you directly to, if it's a real custom type of hardware? No, uh, any, any device, as long as it's an Android device or an iOS device, or a flavor of one of these, uh, uh, our installation packet, our agent that gets installed on, 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 on these machines, it has all the drivers, required drivers uh, needed for it. And uh, you just have to plug it in and you have to select whether you want to share it or not. Once you do so, that device becomes available. Awesome. Um, so Prakash, you know, we talked about security. We talked about a bunch of other things uh, with mobile testing that's important. Uh, another thing is performance and performance testing battery life, those type of things. Does Astro Farm help with that at all? Or is that not part of the uh, core features? Oh, 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 absolutely, absolutely. So uh, Astro Farm has uh, 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 this, this section in the UI where even either you are working on the device manually or you're running an automation test case, in order to do both or either of them, you have to procure the device from the Astro Farm using a use button on the UI or uh, you can call a procurement API. Uh, the moment you do that, the AstroFarm engine starts recording lots of vitals of the devices, which includes the CPU usage per process, uh, the battery usage, uh, not just the uh, system-wide battery usage, but you can also select the specific application that you are trying to stress right now, the data usage, the Wi-Fi mobile data usage of that application, any crashes that happens on that application, it starts monitoring all of them and it keeps recording them during the entire session of, of, your, of your testing. So that once your test is completed, you can know and you can compare uh, uh, the battery uh, usage trend, the data usage trend, and the CPU usage trend between the various invocation uh, of the same test cases. So a lot of times people can get lost in logs and reports. How easy is the reporting? Is there any functionality that does AI that says, uh, you ran this last month, X amount of times, you ran it this month, X amount of times, and the uh, CPU has, has spiked by X amount of percent. Does it do anything like that to correlate it for you? Uh, or so get bubble we, up insights? Yes, yes. So, so we have a dashboard section which makes it extremely easy for you to see the various invocations side by side uh, with the average values of all these trends that I have talked about. Uh, and then you, 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 you see a sort of one is to one comparison between two or three test invocations. And you can start them, filter them, uh, uh, based upon your or your needs, and you can see that whether you have done well compared to the last execution or worse. So yeah, it's pretty intuitive. Awesome. Okay, Prakash. Before we go, is there one piece of actual advice you can give to someone to help them with their mobile testing efforts? And what's the best way to find, contact you, and learn more about AstroFarm? Uh piece of advice I would say. Uh, I, I, I guess, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, right, the technology is sort of uh, changing very fast, the kind of devices that are coming in, and uh, the, the, the frameworks themselves, right, newer versions of Appium, Selenium. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's important for us to sort of uh, keep, keep ourselves updated and uh, be very open-minded, uh, be mindful of the newer technologies that are coming in. Uh, chat GPT, I, I love chat GPT. It has so much in our day-to-day -day activities and in writing small, small scripts. So uh, we, we, should, we should definitely make the best use of these new technologies, uh, which can help us do more uh, compared to uh, what uh, we can normally do. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, and in, in order to contact us, I guess uh, our website has, has lots of information, uh, specifically about AstroFarm as well. There's, if you go to our website, to the products page, you go to the AstroFarm page, uh, it, it has most of the information about uh, Astro Farm, there's a contact us uh, sort of form there. If you have any inquiries, any questions, you can sign up for the product. You can contact us from there. And we also have a very nice chat button on our website. And, 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 and we, we take pride in our, our, in our support and our, our customer support, right? So even if you are not a customer yet, and if you ping us over chat, uh, somebody, some, one of our rock stars are going to sort of uh, get in touch with you immediately and 
uh, would be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks again for your automation awesomeness. The links to everything of value we covered in this episode, hand on over to testguild.com forward slash A480. And if the show has helped you in any way, why not rate it and review it in iTunes? Reviews really help in the rankings of the show, and I read each and every one of them. So that's it for this episode of the Test Guild Automation Podcast. I'm Joe, and my mission is to help you succeed with creating end-to-end, full-stack automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the Test Guild Automation Podcast. Head on over to testguild.com for full show notes, amazing blog articles, and online testing conferences. Don't forget to subscribe to the Guild to continue your testing journey.